Hey everyone, so welcome back to the third part of this video tutorial series on editing audiobooks the Dion Audio way. Um, real quickly, still some more introductory stuff, unfortunately, but again, like the settings, these are some good shortcuts to know, and that some people, uh, you know, even despite working in Pro Tools for a while or having an education in it, um, familiarity with some of these might not be high. And that's something to touch on real quick. These are not just shortcuts that I, I would want you to know um, with thinking about them, and not even just off the top of your head, but I would want you to be able to hit these shortcuts without looking. You know what I mean? Um, without having to look at your keyboard. This is some, isn't something that, that all Pro Tools teachers emphasize, and I kind of wish it was, because it's something that all piano, player, uh, piano teachers and all typing teachers emphasize, is that looking at your hands wastes time. So that if you can get to there by feel, that's the quickest way to do things. And it's especially important in audiobooks because our eyes should actually be on the script the whole time. Not even Pro Tools, but that we should be watching the script whenever possible. So um, also we want to be trying to do things with both hands at once. So if you can do something with your mouse while you're doing, while you're setting up to do something else with your left hand, then that's the best way to do it. Otherwise, you're stuck doing something with your mouse, then looking down, then doing it with your left hand. That's never going to be as fast as just being able to fire off the two things at once without having to look. Never. Trust me. So don't just know these shortcuts, but know these shortcuts by feel. Whatever keyboard you have, you should be able to do it. You have your tone keys here, ASDF. You know, uh, you've got the corner here. You've got the space bar. There are a bunch of geographical landmarks basically on your keyboard. And like I said, you know, all typists know how to get, get around their keyboard without... Um, uh, you know, having to look at it and, you know, that's how they type so fast. You know, hunt and packers are slower. You don't want to be a hunt and pack pro toolser, you know? So let's get all of these um, locked and loaded. Um, some really important ones are all the navigational shortcuts. And sorry, I don't list them all here, but there's just a bunch of combinations. It's pretty much any combination of tab, shift, option, control, and also return. Um, the, the two most important would be, um, you know, tab and shift tab, and um, I'd also throw um, option tab tab in there. And basically what these all mean is that tab sends you to the next, um, you know, edit. If you had tab to transients on, it would tab to the next transient. But since we're, since we've got that off, tab tabs you to the next um, edit. Option in this context means opposite. So if you hit option tab, it takes you backwards, right? The same goes for return. Return takes you to the beginning of the session, option takes you to the end. So think of option as meaning opposite. Shift will extend the selection. So it won't just take you there, it will sh extend the selection. So shift tab, and then that also applies to shift option tab. Now when I say shift option tab to some people, I see their hands do all kinds of crazy stuff to try to get shift option tab. Um, you know, uh, but really uh, there, are, there are a few uh, easy ways. Thumb, index finger, and third finger is one way. Or as you saw me do, um, thumb on option, a pinky on shift and second finger on tab, but you definitely want to be able to hit tab, uh, you know, shift tab, and then option tab or shift option tab um, quickly, because this will allow you to get around, not just get around your clips e uh, easily, but also create fades because on one side, if you're trying to make a fade on just one side of something, you can use shift tab F, and then you know it's going to have to adjust those, but. Um, I could do a better job of showing how that, that should work real quick. Shift tab F. Uh, no, it still didn't work. <laughs> yeah, see so shift tab F or um, shift option tab F. You know, you want to be able to fire those off really quickly um, so that you can make uh, fades on one side. If you want to make a, a symmetrical fade, then you can do that with your little smart tool by clicking in the lower do, uh, lower corners there. Do never, never create a... Uh, fade in or fade out like that. So that's how you want to create fades. Either you're creating fade on one side or you're creating the fade on the other side or you're creating a small symmetrical fade. Although these would be less common and usually have to be shorter. So, um, but anyway, these are all really important to know. Um, uh, the ones involving control are a little less important, but the ones involving control are helpful because they'll select the entire um, uh, clip there. And if you do option uh, control tab, it'll go backwards selecting entire clips. If you do all three, it'll, it'll go backwards selecting the entire clip and extending the selection from your current selection to the end of the clip that you're selecting. 
if that makes sense. And so that's what that does. Uh, but anyway, so those are all, all of those combinations of buttons are important to know and to know what they do and to be able to hit at least most of the important ones, um, you know, just, just by feel, you know, tab, shift, tab, shift, option, tab, option, tab, stuff like that. Uh, copy and paste. If you have keyboard focus mode on, then you can just, um, use X, C and, uh, V and they'll all work as co copy and paste. And, um, we're actually going to use a, uh, uh, we're, I'm going to show you a <clears throat> macro that will use X by itself. So you might want to get into the habit of using command X for cut, but for, um, copy and paste, you could just use C and V, you know, that's easy. Undo again, if keyboard focus mode is on, you can just, um, hit undo, right. And it'll undo things. Um, if you don't have keyboard focus mon mode on, you have to remember to hit command. A redo is shift command Z. I meet a lot of people who don't know this one by feel. This is a good one to know because as easy it is, as it is to undo something, or uh, as easy it is, is to make to make a mistake and then undo it. It's very easy to undo something and then realize it wasn't a mistake, or to undo twice and want to redo. So definitely do know uh, Shift Command Z. Um, plain stop. This will be our most important one, along with centering the screen. Because as I said, we don't want to have to um, navigate along. We don't want to spend time or key presses or mouse clicks navigating along. So as we go through, we're just gonna um, stop and hit Q when we get to a place that we want to stop at, you know? And so instead of navigating around, we're mostly using play and stop as our navigation as we move through this thing linearly, just using Q as a way to center the screen. Also W center the screen. Now for fades, we're going to use keyboard focus mode F. So as much as I've been talking about that, it's time. If you haven't been using keyboard focus mode, we got to use it now because the thing is, if I do this with command F, I get this. And I don't want to get this. Uh, I want to just make my default fade that I set up in the preferences. And the way to, to way that the way to instantly do that is to just hit F in keyboard focus mode. Um, I'm going to be using the smart tool entirely. Some people prefer switching tools um, because then some you know as you know the smart tool behaves as a certain tool when your mouse cursor is in certain places. So if you want some more precision than that, sometimes people are uh, will end up, you know, uh, switching tools, but I actually get by really well with, with just a smart tool. And um, I end up spending a lot less time tool switching. Although sometimes I will admit, you know, you have you want to switch out of the smart tool to a particular tool to force it to do that. But I, I really don't spend that much time doing that. So um, if you're not going to use the smart tool, at least then you definitely want to know, um, you know, command, uh, two, three, four, et cetera, so you can go between your tools. Otherwise, just no Command-7 like I do. Um, we're gonna be working entirely in Shuffle. If you see it go off of Shuffle, or if it's not defaulted to Shuffle, you can just hit Command-1. Uh, these are Command-1, Command-2, Command-3, Command-4. So that's the way to remember that. Shuffle is Command-1 because it's the first option there. Um, or I'm sorry, I've been saying Command, but it's Option. Option 1, 2, 3, and 4 uh, for Shuffle, Slip, Spot, and Grid. Oops. Okay. So uh, zooming in and out horizontally in keyboard focus mode is accomplished with R and T. And like I might have said, I like to be able to zoom in and out in both dimensions, maybe zoom in in one dimension and out in another at the same time. So what's nice for that, actually, as much as keyboard shortcuts are great, I like to be able to use sheet keyboard shortcuts in uh, addition to zooming on the waveform height here with the mouse so that we can so that I can zoom in several directions at once. Uh, the key, the keyboard shortcut for zooming the waveform up and down is a little more awkward than R and T. R and T are very easy. So it makes more sense to do the waveform um, zooming with the mouse while you're doing uh, horizontal zooming with R and T. We'll get more into that later when we start taking out noises. That'll be really important. <clears throat> to get started, we need to set up just some basic macros. Um, we need to listen in high speed um, and we don't want to be able to have to hit control nine to do that. I'll we'll take our hand off our mouse to do that. And it's nice to have some pre-roll with high speed playback, right? So, um, let me just get that loaded up here, right? Okay. So what you can see is it hits the space key twice. It waits 0.4 seconds for pro tools to wake up. That's a little higher because I'm running, um, recording software right now. So, uh, I'm giving it a, I'm giving the computer a lot of time to think, but then it'll hit the control nine keys, uh, keystroke for you. So when you come over here, all you have to do to listen at high speed is hit control space. It should back up and play in high speed from there. Right. And if you didn't get why it does it with pre-roll because it just hits the space key twice, that's because hitting the space key twice will whatever your pre-roll is. Um, right here, we've got, uh, you know, 0 0.850, uh, we want, you know, that's the amount it's going to go back by when we hit space twice, you know? So, uh, that's going to, you know, you want to set your pre-roll to something 
um, usually a little less than a second, but you don't want it to be zero because we're going to use the pre-roll in order to um, listen back to things as we're editing them, as you'll see. You know, if I make, if I, uh, you know, plop this over here and then want to listen to that, I don't want to have to do another click over here to uh, listen to it. I'll just make an edit and then immediately hit the space bar, right? So having the, the pre-roll on the high-speed playback en enables the similar thing. You can make an edit like that and then instantly hear it back and in high speed with pre-roll. So that's pretty good. Uh, you want uh, memory locations. Um, we were talking about a bit about that earlier. That's important for zooming. It's more important if you're doing roll editing, which we'll get into, but um, these are really great for uh, getting to your first zoom, first and second zoom settings. And as you see, that's why we had the classic keypad on was for one period and two period to work. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I like to set up a preferences um, uh, macro right here, as you can see, control P takes me to preferences. I don't know why Avid doesn't just have a keystroke for preferences. But anyway, one of the main reasons is as I'm editing a book, I end up starting at, at kind of a moderate, modest, uh, custom shuttle lock speed, but then I'll, I'll quickly try to gun it up to what I think, um, I, I, I can handle for a particular reader depending on their speed and pitch, et cetera, you know? So it's just, um, you, you want to be able to access that quickly. So control P, um, there's some other macros we're going to go into later when we get into a video that's heavy on macros, but just to teach you the basics of how to edit before I came along and made these macros, kind of the, you know, the basic, uh, uh, you know, strategies, um, you're going to want at least these, these few macros set up probably. Um, so I think that's about it. If you know all of these and can hit these, uh, without looking, being able to hit Q X space, shift tab, tab, uh, shift option tab and option tab and the F key. Ooh, and R and T, those would be the most important. I really, I don't, I don't think I've ever had to look at those. Look, for, look at the keyboard for those shortcuts in quite a few years, and you should be able to do the same thing. Um, all right, so I think that's it. I think in the next video we can start getting ready, uh, importing our files, and cutting room tone up. Nice, almost there.